It's another case for Walter and Bunny. That's right, the famous detective duo who solve case after case in post-Nuclear Vegas are in for another mystery, brought to you by A-Bomb Radio. Today's strange story, the case of the Green Robes. Beginning in an old brick mansion, hidden deep within the outer Vegas mountain range, Walter and Bunny interview a wealthy family consisting of a mother, father, and butler. I'm telling you, Walter, this was the last time I told her she would be partying in New Vegas for a long time. And after seeing how bad the Legion hit Nipton and Nelson, we knew it would only be a matter of days before their presence would pose a threat to the main region. Indeed. I particularly witnessed the town's massacre only mere moments after it happened. Yes. However, the town seems so far from us that none of us would expect such a rapid influx of violence even over here. Every day it's something different. I share your sentiments. But I have my doubts that our new Legion friends have anything to do with it, being so close to the city. They may have crossed the river, but it's going to be a mighty push before you'll start seeing red in this neck of the woods. What are you, 45 minutes from the city limits on foot? It's an easy scapegoat, I know. But wouldn't you find it funny that Lori goes missing shortly after we got the news? What exactly was her situation again? She spent every other Friday gambling at the Strip with some of her girlfriends. Like most local girls do, they would be out for long hours and come home in the early hours of the morning. Among Lori, there was Janet, Corleen, and, uh... And who was that last girl, Mo? Uh, Sheila, ma'am. Yes, Sheila. We never corresponded with their parents, or know if they have any, but... Uh, they've been over here plenty of times, and we're all nice girls. Hmm. Do you have any pictures of them by any chance? Oh, yes. We have one from just three weeks ago. Mo, go fetch that portrait, if you will. Yes, ma'am. Aw, I can tell just how close they are from this image alone. Yes, indeed they were. I really hope this is enough to go by, you two. We were always very strict about Lori's free time in the city, and she respected it every single instance. A father can only hope she rented a hotel there to sleep off a rough weekend. But for her friends not to respond either? That's what's worrying me. I understand. And I'm going to keep this picture with me if you don't mind. With my connections in the city, finding at least one out of these four girls should be a breeze, if they're within the Vegas walls. Oh, thank you, Detective. Thank you. Bunny, you stay here. What? I want you to look after the family while I'm gone. We'll keep in touch via radio, just in case she or one of the other girls comes back. Oh, well, that makes sense. Just keep safe, Walter. I'll keep my Pip-Boy on. Miss Masterson, is this okay with you? Please, stay as long as you need to. Our house is yours. Mo, show our guest to her room just in case she needs it. Of course, ma'am. Please, this way. I'll be in touch. Before you knew it, I was making my way to the bar of the Gamora Hotel and Casino. It was midday at this point, and the place was lightly populated. I hardly gave the place my business in protest to the cutthroats that owned it, but if there's a dirty deed to be done with girls, it would start here, as atrocious as that is to assume. Upon looking at the picture a second time, I noticed a particularly young woman sitting alone with a light yellow drink in her hand, long, dirty blonde hair with brown roots as clear as day. Yup. This was a girl from the picture. Uh, what's this? It's from Hat and Trench Coat over there. Ah, well, you're a little too old for me, mister, wouldn't you say? Can I join you? Sure. 
Why not? Thanks for the jester, mister. But I'm still recovering from the last party. And, well, you're not much my type anyway. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm not interested. Not interested? After buying a girl a drink? Ha! <laughs> no need to feel embarrassed. You got shot down. It happens to all of us. Whoa! That's good stuff. Wait, you're serious, aren't you? Well, if you're not here to make a steady gal of me, then you're the second weirdest guy I've met all week. Second weirdest? It's a long story. Then I'm here to hear it. Uh, judging by this picture, can I assume you're Sheila, Lori's friend? Where did you... The Mastersons sent for me as soon as they could, Sheila. I'm assuming you know she's missing. A P.I.? Oh, boy. How long's it been? Three days, Sheila. Cripes. Well, that sounds about right. Look, we've been doing the same old night in the town for years now, and I've always partied hardest. That's why I'm still here. I live way down towards Prim and make the most of our drunk little pilgrimage, so I rent a room for a while till I can stand on two feet again. Me, Lori, Coraline, and Janet part ways once we drink the town dry and do it all again in two weeks. She's really missing? Her family in the mountains hasn't heard a peep since Friday. Gosh. They immediately pointed fingers at the Legion, which makes sense to some degree, yet they have no influence this deep in the Mojave just yet. So I ruled them out. I was going to pry about what exactly happened last Friday night, but you seem to know about another mysterious man. Ugh, I can't believe Lori. Yes, yes, detective. I was joking at first, but there indeed was a strange man that approached us that night. Tell me all you know before you pass out. The... the night was going on as usual. Maybe around 10 o'clock at night in this very casino. The four of us were all pretty buzzed at the bar by then, recovering from the roulette tables. When this man, I guess, comes out of the corner of my eye and approaches the other three girls. Interesting. Why do you question if he was a man or not? And why didn't he approach you? Like I said, Detective, I'm the wildest. I just so happened to be on the other side of the bar dancing as I faded in and out of consciousness, while the other three just drank light and talked. As for the man, well... I just couldn't determine what he was since he was wearing the strangest looking robe and hood. A robe and hood? Odd for a party packed night in a casino. And boy was it! It was one of the most crowded nights I've ever seen here. Maybe that's why the guy waltzed in so casually. The robes. It's coming to me. They were darkish green. Really? Yeah. Green. With some assorted metal in certain places. I swear I saw a colander pot hooked to the abdomen of it. Green robes and metal. What else can you remember? I sort of passed in and out, but the last thing I can remember is the figure passing an atomic cocktail to Lori. Yeah, the ones that come in those big white bottles shaped like rocket ships. Just for Lori? Well, I assume he only had one, but judging by the way their faces lit up around him, they were going to share it. And are you sure this isn't some drunk fever dream? Those three gals are the bestest friends I've had in a while, Detective. I wouldn't... I wouldn't... Uh. Uh, Sheila? Sheila? Oh, great. She's back in dreamland. She may have been sauced up pretty good, but not her story. Oh my gosh! You didn't leave her there, did you? No. I fished out her keys and carried her back to her hotel room. That girl passed along some vital information before she passed out, though. So, what exactly happened? Get a load of this. Last Friday, during the festivities, the drunken Sheila witnesses Lori and the other two get approached by a strange man in green garb. Says the girls talk to the man for an unknown amount of time before being handed an atomic cocktail and leaving. That was the last time they were seen by her. Says the man's robe had metal utensils attached all around it. That's the strangest thing I've heard in a while. What exactly do you think are the man's intentions? Your guess is as good as mine. But we can only hope they aren't as sinister as we assume. The figures. This has Shady written all over it. I'll be asking every staff and dancer this place can throw at me to get to the bottom of it. 
Someone else had to see a man in green. I'll keep you posted. Well, wait, Walter. Don't you want to know what I found? Oh, well, yes, of course. I didn't expect there to be anything back at the mansion. I'm talking to you from Lori's room right now. Still a pretty girly place for a person her age, but after doing some snooping, I uncovered her diary tucked behind her bookshelf. I spent the last three hours flipping through it and couldn't help but notice a strange pattern towards the more recent entries. Really? She's been keeping pretty consistent entries since her childhood, so there was a lot to process. But as of the past two months, she makes odd references to something called the glow, as she complains about her mundane privileges out here in the mansion. I won't lie, I didn't picture her as a snooty type, but I suppose she's just being young. The glow? Bunny, are you sure? Yes, why? I must have never given you a lesson on wasteland religions. The glow is the essence of a divine being called Adam. It's a term used by the largest cult in the wasteland. What? I... I can't believe this. A cult? Yes, and they're not usually friendly. Hostile, even. This situation is starting to make a whole lot more sense now. Is there anything else she wrote in the diary? No, just a few mentions here and there. Usually thanking the glow she survived a daily ordeal or something unfortunate. My gosh, I... I had no idea. A cult? Yes, they worship radiation like the Fountain of Youth and believe the war two centuries ago was some type of positive force. They're crazy, and this could only mean they've taken her. I gotta find where the nearest compound is. I'll keep looking over her things while you investigate. Shall I tell her parents? No. Keep them in the dark until I follow up with an update. The last thing we need is them pulling out their hair even more. Good call. Stay safe, Walter. I wouldn't believe it if I were looking you in the eye right now, but the search for the local cult wasn't a tough one. I spoke to a few ghouls and the downtrodden in New Vegas Freeside slums, and it wasn't long before they pointed me to a jagged little mountain in the outskirts. It was so close, in fact, that the lucky 38 tower could still burn your eyes at night if you stared long enough. I was told there would be a cave entrance on the south side, cut off by a gate and watched over by a guard. A small tribute needed to be made in order to be trusted within the fold, so I bagged a fistful of caps and made my way there. Halt, dear traveler. Are you here as an intruder or a pilgrim? Pilgrim, sir. Oh. And how did you hear of our local cell? We're sick of my old life. A few friends reached out to me to help. I refused them at first until they told me about the glow's sweet serenity. Once I knew this was the only path left, I had no choice but to pursue a life devoted to Adam. A friend said to come here and meet you at the gate. I understand. Well, welcome, my friend. In due time, you will be introduced and exposed to the truth. That is, the children of the Atom. For now, we will call you but a mere pilgrim. But in due time, it will be brother. I'm honored, sir. Our compound is vast just beyond this cave entrance. And there are many things we must understandably restrict from pilgrim eyes. If you would, will you permit me to blindfold you? Of course. Excellent. Please turn around. By the way, what is your name, Pilgrim? My name is Walt. God. Hey, you awake? Oh, is this part of the orientation? No, well, yes, I guess. They brought you in the same way they brought me here. You're the first boy I've seen so far in this cage. <coughs> Wait, Masterson? Lori Masterson? Uh, how do you know my name? When I was coming to just now, I, I thought I was talking to your mother. You look just like her. <coughs> At least I found you. <gasps> So they sent help after all. Are you the help? Well, 
I was. The watchman outside was eating out of the palm of my hand until he drugged me with something. Cultists are learning to catch on quick these days, I suppose. No. They do that to all they bring in. I've been hearing them talk, and they only let their agents or whatever roam outside of the cave. They use a drink. Not me. And they stuck me with a dart. So then, what's the plan for us regular folks? See Janet on the floor over there? That's the plan for us. The ghoul? What's happened to her? That's your other friend, correct? Yes. Just yesterday she had flawless skin and gorgeous brown hair. Now she's bald and looking like a zombie. We're on a waiting list of some kind, and I think I'm next. Hmm. Must be using some sort of irradiated dipping vat to ghoulify their victims. I can see it just over there, and it's a big one. This is somewhat reminiscent of how the super mutants came to be. <laughs> I, I just want to go home. This man just came up to us during the party, and we were so drunk, and, and we were so stupid. I just... I, I just... It's okay. Sheila told me everything. Now say, hand me my hat, will you? <laughs> okay. What are we gonna do? You just stay here and act casual. Just be ready to run with me when I come back. Is Janet alive? She's been asleep since they took her back like this. Whatever they used on her is doing this. Well, get her ready too, then. I think there's a control panel above the vat that can cause a distraction. Aha! There it is. Okay, just sit tight. Guard! Guard! Guard, I need you, quick! Guard! What is it, Pilgrim? I'm bleeding out over here. Darn rusty cage nicked me on the side. What? Oh no, we can't have that. We need you fresh in order for the procedure to work. Uh, hurry, won't you? Okay, now no sudden moves. I need to take you to the healing wing if it's as bad as you say. Uh, hey! Now take me up to that control panel. What? How did you... what? You heard me, pal. Over by the toxic waste you're dunking people in. And don't you scream for help. I'll see to it that you can't do it anymore. I, I, okay, okay, okay. Lori, take the gamma gun from his belt. All right, let's move. You're going to help me with a little plan I've got for this place. We'll return to our mystery after this. In a world where solid-state electronics and vacuum tubes are still meta, people never stop loving atomic-powered everything. A chosen 500 stepped inside a subterranean vault to be spared the nuclear horror of the inevitable Great War. 25 years later, they emerge after the fallout settles to retake Appalachia. Among them, two former rivals whose blood feud will tear West Virginia apart in their epic struggle for survival. Chad, a vault bro who has a strength of 15, an intelligence of 2, and is a complete wasteland dickhead. Simon, a complicated anti-hero who chooses light and hope, but accidentally becomes a cannibal and wakes up naked and afraid with a Scorch Beast Queen after a date goes terribly wrong. What? I mean, it's a wild wasteland, right? This dark humor radio drama will have you driving off the road and crawling out from under the fallout. Two men. One wasteland. And so many nukes. Chad, a Fallout 76 podcast, rated R. Now streaming on your holotape player podcasty thing. And now, back to our story. Walter? Walter, come in. Walter? It's Bunny, can you hear me? Miss Bunny? Candace, hi. We were just about to sit down for dinner. We figured since you were still on the job that you would like to join us. 
It sounded as if we lost a mole rat in the house all day. <laughs> um, were you able to find anything? Um, no, unfortunately. But rest assured, Walter spending such a long time out there must mean he's making progress. I believe he said something about finding Sheila, and some information from the casino she had to share. Oh, that's excellent. <sighs> finding one friend may just be all we need. I'm willing to wait for the full report. Come now, Zane. We have a table to prepare. Mo, show Bunny to the powder room so she can freshen up. Yes, ma'am. This way, please. So, how long have you been serving the Mastersons? Many years, ma'am. I had a feeling. I'm so sorry about all of this. The news must be upsetting for as long as you've known Lori. Yes, I've known her for a very long time now. I care about Lori very much. It's just so frustrating with cases like these. You know she's only a girl who likes to do young girl things. Party, play hooky, go out with boys. But you can't take such a long stint like this so lightly. And then there's always a chance this is just some one-off thing that required no search at all. But you can never be sure. Powder room, ma'am. Oh, thank you, Mo. Um, I was meaning to keep this away from Candace and Zane, but I had a feeling that you would be an easier person to ask this to. Mm. <clears throat> yes, the thing is, I did some searching in Lori's room earlier today and found a diary of hers tucked away with some interesting subject matter in it. Yes, I saw. Oh, you did? Yes, and it's rather private. Of course, but I'm sure you understand the situation at hand. What did you read? Well, that was what I was going to ask you about. Everything seemed perfectly normal until the more recent entries. Lori just seems to rave about this Adam being over and over again, to the point where her writing becomes illegible. Walter told me over the horn that it had some affiliation with a wasteland cult. You're practically a third parent to Lori. Would you happen to know anything like this that may have had an influence so drastically on her? Hmm. Another human? No. Something beyond our comprehension. Something that could dash each living particle into infinite universes? Absolutely. <gasps> but I don't understand. Of course you don't. None of you don't. You were doing good until you just admitted that to me. I was willing to wait until I poured you all drinks for dinner. But you just had to keep prying. Looks like this will have to be done the dirty way. What? What are you going to do? Your friend hasn't come back with Lori yet, which is good. I can only hope her transition has begun without interruption. However, if they do return as planned, I'll have a little test prepared for her. Sacrificing the both of you, plus her parents, all in one room. Only then will I know if she's ready to truly serve Adam in all his glory. Now in the powder room, Bunny, while I gather the other two. Now, or be divided in his light. I guess I haven't room to argue. Just move your arm so I can... Unhand me, you blonde-headed wench! There, that should keep you in place for a while. Bunny, what was that noise? Were those gunshots? Look, there's no time to explain. I locked Mo in the bathroom. He was trying to kill me. Mo, but how? <laughs> He's coming. Upstairs, quickly. Now I've got the panel settings on overdrive. 
One pull of a lever and this place gets flooded by your own supply. All I need is a password. Get talking, bub. Think about what you're doing here, Pilgrim. Years of excavation and recruitment all gone to waste. The code. Now. Before your friends show up. The, the code is... 2866. Six. Adam. Huh. How unclever. Now let me go. Right after I commence the overload. No, 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 no! There. Now you can go. <laughs> Lori, let's get going. I'm on my way. If you can't carry Janet, I'll do it. I'll meet you outside. Who was your contact? Who was the one who tipped you off about me? One, one of our contacts, okay? I just spoke to two of them in Freeside. I don't care if they don't have names. Just tell me which one. Was it the bleached ghoul or the brown ghoul? Huh? No, no. He works outside of the city. You wouldn't know him. You wouldn't even know how to get to him. Try me, and don't lie. He operates from a mansion within the cliffs. He's the head of our chapter. Only visits a few times out of the year, so he doesn't risk his divine knowledge from non-believers like you. But that's all I'm going to tell you. Mansion? Wait! Lori! What was the name of that butler of yours? You mean Mo? Well, he couldn't have... You know him? Now it all makes sense now. No. 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 You know too much! <laughs> no! Stop! Well, you've known Mo all your life, Lori. I need to know what he did to take you this far. I don't remember Mo being anything but my family's butler, that's it. The only thing I remember doing to end up in that cave was drinking too much. We'll have to sort that out once the dust settles. But now, we need to head back to your house. Good idea. Wait. If Mo phoned in to the children of Adam to subdue me... And that must mean Bunny's in danger too. And probably your whole family. We need to go. Now. <gasps> what in the world has gotten into him? If you ask me, it's been in him for a very long time. He's been manipulating your daughter. But how in the world could we not know about this? I don't know. But for you all to live in the same house every day, he must have been doing it very covertly. <laughs> she will guide us to a new era of power! The circle is almost complete! Open this door and cease blocking the inevitable! Mo, we've known you for 20 years! You stop this madness right now! And tell us what you've done to our daughter! Stand back, you two! Darn! That door's too thick. I can't make a connection. Your feeble efforts were in vain, young lady! Very soon, the Mojave Wasteland shall fear no more of their petty war. Soon, all talk will be of the glow and its precious serenity. In fact, your friend in the hat should be making a fine addition to Adam right about now. <laughs> What was that? Bunny? The Mastersons? Are you in there? Walter? It's okay, everyone. He's gone. Oh, my goodness. You couldn't have come at a better time, Walter. Thank you. That madman had us pinned in this room for almost an hour. Say, who's that with you? Father! Father! Lori? Oh, sweet heavens! My daughter! I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. All that matters is that you're back here. You certainly gave me a scare too, Walter. I would ask you why you didn't pick up, 
but our cult friend here may have just given me a clue. Yes, and I think you'll find that we were both victims of his little game. Uh, let's let the family have a moment. In the meantime, let's you and I combine our experiences to finish this trippy little puzzle. If you ask me, Mo has been dosing your daughter with the same drug little by little over the past few months. He always served the meals, yes? I wouldn't be surprised if a few drops of that junk went into Lori's beverage. <gasps> that monster! How dare he! Mo knew we were onto him the moment we entered your home. And that's why he kept in constant communication with the compound. If I ever discovered it, there were strict orders to bag me and imprison me. Good thing we were able to level that place, or you'd be talking to another ghoul right now. This... this is too much. Mo, he came looking for an honest job at our previous home, and he's been a member of the family ever since. Could he have always been like this? I mean, he hardly ever left the house. That definitely remains a mystery, Candace. Same goes for why he chose Lori out of all people to be the cult's chosen candidate. Perhaps a prophecy? We may never know. So, what happens to Janet? Oh, we'll get in touch with her family and tell them what happened. For now, we'll tend to her needs and do our best to get her comfortable with how she is now. It's such a shame. But we all know what matters is that their daughter is still alive, just like ours. We're sorry you had to go through the trouble of something this disturbing. It's not often we deal with wasteland cult activities, but they're never pleasant. And Candace? Zane? I really hope you're thinking what I'm thinking when it comes to Lori going out now. Believe me, that gavel has already been hammered. No daughter of mine is going out until further notice. At least until the war ends. This has been another harrowing case of Walter and Bunny. This episode was written and produced by Preston Harden, edited and mixed by Ethan Walsh. In the case of the green robes, Walter was impersonated by Eric Huffman, Bunny and Sheila by Crystal Romero, Zane by Joshua Belmonte, Candace by Eileen Anglin, Mo by Philip Sacramento, and The Watchman by Simon D. Ailsey. And now, a special thank you to A-Bomb Radio's second and third tier patrons. To Michael D. Batkew and Joel Jackal, we thank you for your support. If you would like to support the True Vault Escapade series, be sure to consult the description below. Do you like adventure? Yeah. Do you like laughing? Uh, yeah. Would you like to listen to a group of people you don't know play D&D and reference retro pop culture you vaguely remember? Um... Excellent. You're going to love Committee Quest. We play D&D in the world of Ameren. We use adventure modules and supplements made by people in the community. We also have a sweet synthwave backing track. Come and join us on our adventure. Volume 1 has been completed. Volume 2 coming the end of January. You can find us on iTunes, Podbean, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Hey there, my name is Jameson, or Big Cat. And I am Brenna, or Mother Goose. And together, we are the hosts of the DL Weekly Gaming News. Each week, we bring you the top stories from last week, as well as something you might have missed. Our goal is to start a conversation about what's going on in the world of gaming. 
And every week we have a special guest join us in the chat room, where we discuss a different gamer related topic and learn more about our guests in the 60 second download. And if that isn't enough, we also have Slim Jims. So come and hang out with us every week and join in on the conversation. Good luck and have fun, everybody. And remember, keep your goose loose.